This is Traffic Jams here on CKUA. I'm Lisa Wilton here with you until 6 o'clock. The Calgary Folk Festival kicks off on Thursday, and joining the many amazing musical artists playing this year is a man who has spent six decades working alongside musicians. Richard Flohill has been a journalist, publicist, concert promoter, and was once the artistic director of one of Canada's longest-running festivals, Ontario's Mariposa Folk Festival. For the past several years, Richard has hosted an event dubbed War Stories at the Calgary Folk Fest's Talk Tent. During the workshop, he shares stories from his own lengthy career and invites a group of singers, songwriters, and musicians to share their own. I'm happy to welcome Richard Flohill to Traffic Jams today. Hello, Richard. Hi, how are you, Lisa? Great. I'm so glad you could uh, join us here today. You've got such a an interesting story. Again, you've been in music for so many years. Uh, but first off, you actually started as a reporter in your native uh, Yorkshire in England before moving yeah. to Canada back in 1957. How did you move from uh, being a reporter and, and journalism and finding yourself in the, involved in music? Well, I was always a music fan. And when I came to Canada, I couldn't get a newspaper job. I wound up editing trade magazines with long titles like, how about electrical contracting and maintenance in Canada? (laughs) Well, what I know about electricity is limited. You don't put both fingers in the plug. Yes. (laughs) Um, uh, That's about it. But I did that for several years. But I was a music fan, particularly of blues. And I wanted to bring to Canada people who uh, had never been here before. So, and I did it for selfish reasons. I wanted to see them. Mm-hmm. So I did shows with Muddy Waters and um, old old guys uh, like Sleepy John Estes and Robert Nighthawk. And then later I got ambitious and I did. B.B. King and Bobby Bland, and wow. then I branched out to doing Irish music, and uh, and Miles Davis and Benny Goodman, and that is as it was. It's a dumb way to make a living unless you're Live Nation, <laughs> yeah, and you're running so many shows that the average you clean up. But uh, I never made much money at it, but I had a wonderful time. And got great stories. And now that I'm older than most dirt, um, <laughs> I, I call myself a storyteller. And I, I can't remember exactly when I did the first um, war stories at um, the Calgary Festival, but I've been doing it every year ever since. And mm-hmm. God willing, I will continue for another another while. <laughs> yes, well, it's it's such an interesting concept, um, and it's quite popular. I think a lot of people like to go and, and listen to these stories. And this weekend, you'll be bringing together artists like Courtney Marie Andrews, Tamara Lindman of The Weather Station, Asa yes. Nabi, uh, Jim Bryson will also be there as well. And they're going to talk about their own uh, quote-unquote war stories. How do you get them to open up about their experiences? Well, I suppose that was something I originally learned when I was 16 years old and starting and, you know, had my first job as a newspaper reporter. You have to establish some empathy between whoever you're interviewing and, uh, and, and ask the right questions. Uh, some of the stories I've, I've, some of the questions I would ask is, what's the worst gig you've ever done? And they go, oh, right, mm-hmm. I remember, and then out come the stories. What's the worst travel experience you've ever had? What celebrity have you met that you liked? And what celebrity have you met that you didn't like? Um, and, you know, some, uh, do you have any hobbies outside of music? Uh, one of my, one of my um, uh, panelists is, is Andrea Ramelo, who is a friend of mine, um, and I, I'm going to ask her about her Italian background and and why she and how she finds herself in Canada, you know, doing a great a number of recordings and performances in Italian. Mm. Uh, although she was born here and and you know has 
perfect English. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, you, you just try and get people to open up and tell stories. And if they're funny, more, more, the more the better. Right. <laughs> So when people go to see these, uh, go to the talk tents to listen to these stories, you know, what do they get out of it? I mean, there'll be some some laughs, well, but do they get a good sense of like what it's like to be a working musician in the country? I, I think so. And they get to see a different side of an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the artist on stage, he or she sings, does whatever they do, but you don't see them in an informal sit down, you know, with other performers talking about the war stories and and being a performer traveling. Uh, I I talked to one guy, told a story about how uh, an elderly gentleman sitting next to him on a flight, a long 14-hour flight, died in mid-flight. Oh, my. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, Stuff like this happens. I remember another story where somebody uh, was opening for Joan Byers, but Byers people would not let her travel in any of their tour buses. So she's in a beat-up Honda, you know, following <laughs> the star. Right. <laughs> and 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 her hotel story is un untellable, uh, even on CKUA. <laughs> but it had the audience shocked, horrified, and amused all at once. Right. <laughs> um, so you, you, you just get that. You, you see a performer as a human being, you know, puts his or her pants on one leg at a time like everybody else, mm-hmm. you know? Um, to wrap things up here a little bit, uh, you recently turned 89 years old, and uh, again, yes. you're only semi-retired. <laughs> Music keeps dragging you back in. What do you, what's, what's so hard to give up about uh, being in the music industry or working? Oh, just that I'm bored doing nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's not the glamour that people who don't understand it think about it is not existent it's it's a job Mm -hmm. and it's a job that good people with talent and energy can share the gifts that the gods gave them with you and i and everybody else with the 18 people who saw charlotte's play last night Uh, you share that gift and at the end of it uh if you work very hard you might just make a living doing it Right, right. I mean, I mean, I, I can't make music. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. I dance like a pregnant rhinoceros, <laughs> and it frightens children. And I don't do it in public, but I have helped make music happen. And my reward is the applause that the artist gets. That's that's. That's what sustains me. Never made any money, but hey, I've had three trips to Australia. Uh, you know, I've traveled all over Europe. Uh, I've been in every province in Canada except Nunavut, which is weird because for years I worked with a band from from Iqaluit called the, the Cherry Cans. Oh, they're great. And in fact, it, Two of my trips to Australia was sort of semi road managing those guys. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard, for uh, it's my pleasure for I'm talking so to us. I'm looking today. forward to being in Calgary. I love, you know, I live in a city which is under permanent construction. Mm. And whenever I come to Calgary, I notice that there are hardly any cranes in the sky and that the city is sort of finished. It's built. It's done. And that's kind of nice. I suppose, although as someone who drives every day, almost every day in Calgary, <laughs> there's some construction, let me tell you. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, but nothing like it is here. Right. It's crazy. I thank you for the chance of chatting with you. I enjoyed it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you.
That was Richard Flohill. War Stories takes place Saturday and Sunday at 3.45 p.m. at the Talk Tent on Princess Island Park as part of the Calgary Folk Music Festival. To see the full schedule and pick up tickets, go to calgaryfolkfest.com.